Welcome to the Plague Hive. National season is over and Uzuri has actually won two national championships, one of which was in Greece. I'm joined today by Dimitris, the pilot who made it happen. Dimitris, thanks for being on the channel and congratulations for your win. I think all of us were rooting for you when you beat that Lexi in the finals, which were live streamed. If you haven't seen that already, go back to it. I'm going to link the whole thing in the description of the video. It was a very, very interesting and very nice match, very back and forth, really close game. And Dimitris managed to close it out finally and beautifully for the win uh, and the Nationals win in Greece. So welcome to the channel. Thanks for being here today with me. And it there, why you chose to run some cards, what your matchups were like. Uh, and then at the end of the video, as usual on this channel, we're going to put it through the paces, play around with it and see how it actually operates live. Thank you very much for the kind words and uh, thank you for having me. You're very welcome. All right. So let's go over the deck that you decided to take to your nationals. Um, let's start with the equipment. I think this is pretty standard stuff the only thing that kind of stood out to me was the lack of black tech whispers can you explain like why you decided to not run that card and just chose to go like solo snapdragon scalers instead the black tech has been uh, in my deck uh, for a long time mm -hmm. prior to this i have tried a list with a couple of uh, contracts uh, in addition to the usual ones of uh, Live No Witness and Surgical, mm -hmm. uh, for the Lexi and the Ninja matchups. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and in that version, I also had been running the Mask of Perdition. Okay. However, I at some point realized that I probably don't need to devote all these many slots into these otherwise kind of favorable matchups. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm and decided to rededicate them to matchups that either uh, could be a bit of a struggle, like I slander, mm -hmm. or they were uh, pretty okay, but I really thought I should be locking them in. Like Bravo, because Bravo is quite popular in the Greek meta. Mm -hmm. So uh, this really influenced my decision to add unmovable, as uh, we'll see later. Right. Nice, yeah, okay, makes sense. Can you just quickly run us through what decks did you actually face? Or generally, like, what's the meta like in Greece? Because I think that also always influences deck building to some extent, right? Like, a, a list that does well in America is not necessarily one that will do well in Europe, just because we have a slightly different meta over here. And then obviously, like, specific countries will have their individual national metas, and that can influence your deck building. Like, for example, I think you didn't run into any Dromais, if I recall correctly. Is it is she not very popular in Greece? Or was that just like you kind of got lucky and you didn't have to face any? I, w I was a bit uh, fortunate with uh, hiding away from Dromais. Mm -hmm. The thing with the Greek meta is that Ninja is one of the most popular decks. Okay. And uh, Dromai loses horribly to that. Yeah. So people, including me, I, because Dromai was my second choice, right. we're uh, kind of afraid to to bring it to the Nationals. We ended up in, uh, on a pool of 48 people, only three guys brought out Dromai and no, none of them uh, made it to the top eight. Okay, right, yeah. That's actually kind of similar to the situation that we had in Germany. We had, I think, like four Dromais in a population of like almost 120 people. But not really that many ninjas, interestingly enough. Like, I don't know why nobody decided to bring Droma because the rest of the top eight looked pretty much what you would expect, right? There was like a whole bunch of Lexis, a bunch of Icelanders, a bunch of Bravos as well. I think there were like 10 or 11 Bravos or something. And a bunch of Uzuri as well, right? Like, I think we had 10 or 11 Uzuri players in Germany. She's really popular over here for some reason. But not that many Dromais, despite that field, I think, being relatively favorable for her. Just not a whole lot of people decided to bring her. So pretty good for us, I would say. Well, in the Greek uh, national south of a uh, pool of 40 people, Katsu was one of the most popular decks. I think we had like seven or eight people and we all okay. also had a, a couple of fives. Mm -hmm. And uh, on top of that, uh, we had also Bravo being very popular, Iceland and Lex being very popular. Right, yeah. We had uh, three Dromais, three Uzuris, mm -hmm. 
what else? Uh, and also, Dorinthe is also kind of popular here. I think mm -hmm. we have three or four. Okay. Well, that's actually, so that's a pretty decent matchup, uh, matchup spread for Azuri, I would say. Like, but basically only Icelander is like really highly unfavored, I would say, out of that matchup spread, right? Because ninjas are typically like, you like seeing a ninja player, you like seeing Fire Katsu as Azuri, that's pretty doable. Uh, Lexi, obviously, um, always good to see. And then Bravo, as you mentioned, is not necessarily like a crazy good matchup, but it's definitely doable. And with some equipment choices and some cyborg choices, you can definitely make that matchup pretty good for Azuri, I would say. That, that is true. And also in, uh, in Greece, uh, we had very good performance by uh, brute players. Mm -hmm. I saw that we had uh, two Levias and the Reiner in the top eight. Yeah. And the... Uh, one of the Levias and uh, uh, one of the Runners were in the top four. I faced the Runner in the top four. Right. But a big factor of me winning that matchup was being uh, higher than him in the, uh, in the seeds, so me choosing to go first. Ah, because okay. He, yeah, yeah. He was playing the combo build, and uh, in, in the top eight, his match lasted like two minutes because he did like uh, 39 damage turn zero. 39 damage turn zero. Okay. That is insane. I, I have to I have to see that list at some point. That sounds pretty interesting. But yeah, smart choice going first there, just so he doesn't have the option to get the unpreventable damage in, and you can like kind of try to take back tempo from there. Nice. All right, so let's get over the rest of the deck. So you said basically black text was just a choice because you felt that the matchup against Lexi, Katsu, Fi, right? The the matchups where you Black text would be good because you can uh, typically hit, so you get the go again and you can cycle it because you get some extra silver. You just felt that those matchups were already good enough that you didn't really need black text, and then you could cut the cut them from the sideboard to just make space for something else instead, right? Also, there is an additional reason. Uh, that being that the fact that Snapdragon doesn't require a hit Mm -hmm. It gives it a, a lot more flexibility. Okay, let's face it. The thing that I'm losing by playing Snapdragon is the ability to go again after a shakedown. Mm -hmm. uh, however, because I have to announce uh, the black tech before it actually goes through, it leaves me open to a defense reaction that my opponent might not otherwise be playing at this point. Yeah. But uh, they will say that, okay, let's uh, nip this in the bud. Makes sense. And, uh, for this reason, Snapdragon has been my choice in almost all matchups uh, from a uh, same point forward. And uh, this was also one of the factors that led to Black Tech being uh, cut from the list. Okay, makes sense. Like, if you're not running it into the majority at some point, you might as well just cut it. Makes sense, yeah. Right, so the rest of this, Crown of Providence, makes sense. You're not playing a contract-based build, you just have the standard leave no witnesses surgical extraction in, so not really any reason to run Mask of Perdition. Spring Tunic, sure, don't really need to talk about Spring Tunic. I, I still think Assassin uses it almost better than any other class. There's so many things you can do with that free resource. Flick Knives also makes sense. MVP, uh, MVP. Okay, did you actually get to kill some people with Flick Knives over the course mm. of the tournament, or...? Yes, uh, the final. Oh, right. Yeah, actually, I, I watched that through. Uh, you did You did pick up the, the flick knives and it wouldn't there, yeah. Very nice. uh, the thing is, you can do all sorts of things. One of uh, my other games that was streamed in the Swiss mm -hmm. against uh, a Levia player, mm -hmm. flick knives gave me a victory as follows. Mm -hmm. My opponent is at 16. And uh, after, as he told me later, he was thinking of going into... Redeemed Levia, but let's leave it uh, to the side for a moment. Mm -hmm. So I'm going for uh, looking for scrap. Classic five guy game, blah, blah. He's, uh, and I have uh, a humble in hand, which is another MVP. We'll talk about it later. Mm -hmm. And at this point, taking this, he will go down to 11. He has a lot of blooded. He has uh, more than 10 cards mm -hmm. uh, of uh, blooded in, uh, in the banish zone. And I'm thinking, okay, you know what? You're playing Levia, most of your cards are attacks that block three or maybe block nothing. If I hit you now with a spider's bite flick knives and then uh, throw the humble at you, mm -hmm. you either give me three cards of your hand 
but then with just one card in your hand, there is no way uh, you're banishing and uh, uh, triggering Levi's ability. Yeah. Or you get hit and uh, you, you die next turn because of uh, the blooded. Because of the so, humble, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so this is uh, an, a, another game that I flick nice cleansed for me. Makes sense, yeah. Also because if he's at like 10 or 11 blood depth, he cannot go redeemed yet. So that's like the perfect spot where you kind of just take all the options away from him. Yeah. Well, uh, at this point it was, uh, it, w- it was a kill, but uh, at any rate I think that it was a mistake from him to mm-hmm. uh, try to go for redeemed. Uh, when they go consumed, it's really a struggle for us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because all the Dread Screamers that they played during the game are now in bands and they can play them again. Yeah. And it, it, it's a bit of a struggle, but uh, on this particular one, uh, I was uh, fortunate that uh, my opponent decided on another strategy. Nice. Sometimes you just have to, you know, get a little bit lucky with your cards. That's just how, it, how the game works. Okay, so Flick Knives, then we have Nerf Scalpel Spider's Bite, also pretty standard. And I already saw you run a third dagger in the form of uh, Orbitoclast. What matchups were you using that in? Where where did you bring that in? Well, uh, you're definitely bringing this in against uh, Icelander. Mm -hmm. And Kano if you meet it, but yeah, that doesn't really happen much that often. Also, with Dorinthia, you go Mm -hmm. Orbitoclast Nerf Scalpel instead of uh, Spider's Bite. Yep. And in the top card that you get to see your opponent's lists, uh, I think I played it both against Trainer and in the final, because I had seen that zero defense reactions. Right, so, okay. But other than that, I would probably not risk it in a blind list, because the effect of throwing the dagger before the direct resolves is uh, very important. It's very strong, yeah, especially against lists that run like a few but not too many d-reacts right i guess so maybe like a katsu or something that runs like just the three flick flack or something it's very strong there yeah okay so we got the daggers let's go over the equipment sideboard real quick the rest of it because this is just ab3 makes perfect sense you are on 17 blues in the main board so ab3 relevant um against icelander obviously technically i guess against kano but like you said it's not very common to face them and this is something of a little bit of a debate because you can find people that just run like ab2 into icelander you can find people that run ab3 so what's your take on that like is there a cutoff number maybe where you say if you run less than 15 blues it doesn't make sense to run ab3 or would you just go okay if i'm worried about icelander ab3 is the thing to do just because it it saves more health and it makes the game go longer and gives you more space to do your stuff as you said it's a bit of a debate Mm -hmm. Uh, my train of thought is that if you're pitching a blue for uh, for, uh, arcane barrier it would be a shame to have it uh, go to waste. Mm-hmm. So for me, AB3 is the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, this obviously influences my decision on uh, the blue count. Mm-hmm. But this is my, my my way of thinking is I will play AB3 and the, because of this, I will have a high blue count. Okay. Not the other way around. Right. Okay. Okay. So you started the list with, I want to play AB3 basically. And then you you set up your resource base, your blue count around that essentially and and figured, okay, if I run AB3 into Icelander, I need a couple more blues in the list. Otherwise, it doesn't really make sense. Okay. Yes, this this is pretty much the trend of thought, that's correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, no, that's pretty good. I also like the the flexibility that Nalrun Hood gives you because I've been playing a lot of uh, Runeblade matchups locally, right? Like one of my locals is a a Vinsat Viserai main. And I always think it would be nice to have access to Flick Knives and Nerf Scalpel against Runeblade, specifically Winset, because she can play very defensively and she runs a lot of D-Reacts sometimes. And it would be nice to have that option. But if you have only the typical like Narun Gloves and Arcane Lantern, you can't really run Flick Knives and Nerf Scalpel. It doesn't work. So having the extra AB piece in the form of Narun Hood would free that up and so you could run not run hood into rune blades and still leave up flick knives or nerf scalpel to deal with any d reacts that they might play 
Uh, especially now with Rosetta Thorn gone, because you don't really need AB2 against Rune Blades anymore. Like, it doesn't do anything. So that's definitely a, a nice extra little bit of uh, advantage that it gives you, in my opinion. Well, to be honest, I never played the second AB for fear of Rosetta. Mm -hmm. Against uh, guys like Vincent and Viserai, you need the AB on because of the Rune Chance. Yeah. That can be a massive amount. Against uh, Briar, I sometimes just, uh, most of the time, I just play no AB because yeah. I find it's not central to their uh, to their game plan. Uh, the physical damage is uh, a lot more prevalent in their mm -hmm. decks. True. They do they do try, of course, to maybe close the match with with Rosetta, but then uh, uh, so am I. I'm trying to close the match uh, when we get to low life with the flick knives. So makes sense. It's a, it's a question of maintaining. Uh, uh, your th uh, health total above the Rosetta killing range. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's it's more about being able to just prevent yourself from going low enough that it actually matters and not really having the AB to pitch to it because they don't really do anything else with arcane damage. That makes sense, yeah. Okay, so that's the equipment taken care of. Why don't we go into the main board here and straight off the bat, this is a pretty standard Uzuri core, I would say, these days. You got your blue stealth base, so obviously blue Uzuri is like the, the strategy that you went for, right? Uh, with the blue stealths and then looking for a scrap as like the payoff for playing those. I love that card. It's so insanely good. Especially if you have Tunic up, just going like looking for a scrap of Tunic into a Codex or like Leave No Witnesses is such a strong two-card hand. It's really crazy. And then the rest of it, I would say, is also pretty standard, like Man Conquer, Death Touch, E-Strike. One thing that stands out a little bit is Nourishing Emptiness. I have seen that in builds before, but I wouldn't say it's like a typical staple for Azuri. So what was the idea with, with running that card? Well, I, I have to say that my starting point had been Widwen's deck right. that went very well in Antwerp, and he was also running uh, three nourishing. Mm -hmm. uh, from what I understood, the idea here was uh, to obviously look for the high roll in the opening mm -hmm. hand and uh, go for a five card hand. But other than that, it's a basic uh, a six attack three block, yeah, uh, which is uh, uh, which is always nice. Yep. And what uh, I ended up doing was saying, okay. I don't ha really have a card that's uh, better than this. Yeah, so okay. It's a 2 for 6 that blocks 3 and uh, sometimes gives you the high roll of saying, okay, maybe I'll go for a 5 card hand or mm -hmm. take a uh, uh, turn 1 or uh, things like that. Okay. So. I think I played it turn 1 maybe once in the tournament. Okay. And uh, most of the other time it was used for blocking. Yeah, but, but still, it, it's a block three. It's a yep. six attack. Still good. I mean, I think like if you want to have just the extra popper, basically your only other option is running Amnesia, which I could see, especially if you say that uh, Ninja is very popular. So that that could be an option to run it against Katsu, right? Specifically as like a hate card, and then obviously we have now got a new option for that. <laughs> Um, yes, I, I think I recall. Yes. Uh, the, this card, uh, the Japanese translation, will be hilarious. <laughs> I love that. And, and that was my spoiler card, obviously. So it has like uh, an extra sweet spot in my heart. And I'm definitely going to be running this in my decks. But out of like, I, if, we, if we think that these three cards, so you have like already dead, you have Nourishing Emptiness, right? And then you have Amnesia as like sort of the last option that you could run in that slot is like a, a two cost six power three block that you run over like your cncs over your uh, shakedowns that you have in the deck anyway so uh, out of these three what do you think would be like your preferred option going forward well going forward it's a uh, i think it's 100 percent going to be the assassin card uh, already mm -hmm. dead uh, because okay when the hyrule happens it's, it's great mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong, but the thing is, the the new card uh, in the new set, in uh, the context of what we've seen so far with mm -hmm. amazing Evo equipment, 
it will really be powerful into this sort of deck by yeah. threatening to banish uh, that particular equipment. Yeah. And I think that in general, this is more of a Arachne card than an Uzuri card, but in the end, it's like we've been saying for the past couple of minutes, a, a 2 for 6 that blocks 3. Yeah. And uh, it's a thing that's uh, more useful than the occasional high roll for no reason. Yeah. No, I, I, I completely agree. I think this is like, it's not a card that is going to be like particularly impactful a lot of the time like it's not obviously it's not you know command and conquer or shakedown where you can use it strip a card from them or something but i think just the floor of being like a two cost six power three block is really high and you can't really go wrong with that and then occasionally you can use it to just do some pretty nasty things to opponents and the fact that it's an assassin card means you can use shred on it, right? You can use black text on it if you wanted to run that, for example. And so it just has some some extra upsides over a card like Nourishing Emptiness or Amnesia as a generic. And, and so. also the new legendary arms equipment that will mm -hmm. obviously be more of an Arachne card. Mm -hmm. That is also a reusable uh, uh, silver uh, buyback thing. The Shriek Razors, yeah. Because this is like a, a mini set, but most of the time it will be enough to, mm -hmm. to get a hit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested to uh, interested to start like building decks with this and trying it out and see if it actually can replace flick knives in some matchups, maybe, uh, or if it, at the end of the day you just don't really have the sideboard space to run both, and you end up with flick knives being your default equipment into most things the way it's been done basically, at the moment. In Uzuri, I wouldn't dream of changing. I yeah. love Flick Knives. But for Arachne, mm -hmm. I think uh, both these cards are, uh, are a boost for uh, them. Yep. And I look forward to seeing them become a bit more of a force to be reckoned with, because mm -hmm. right now it's one of the worst de decks in the map. Unfortunately, yeah. Like, I love Arachne. They're super interesting, super fun to play, but it's... Le as you said it's not a very strong deck at the moment like there's just so many things so many matchups that have a leg up over it that it's hard to bring it to a competitive event if you want to actually you know give you a chance uh yourself a chance of winning so okay let's go over the rest here so we've got cnc death touch shakedown your classic swaps i think these three cards are like staple you always run them Enlightened Strike, just to go a little bit wider, have the flexibility of like choosing the modes. It's a great card. Leave No Witnesses, standard, I think. Also, just like Surgical, they're just good cards. And then the blue stealth base, uh, as you said, like taking inspiration from Sebastian's deck to run this package of like blue stealths and I'm looking for a scrap. Let's see, what else do we have? You've got the Rainbow Isolate or almost Rainbow. You run two of the reds. Oh. So that's also not, I would say, standard. Like you see a lot of decks skip the red isolates. They just run the blues and yellows. And so what was the, the thought there? Why include the reds? You just wanted like extra dominate or just had a couple spare slots? Well, uh, if I'm being honest, I and based on discussions I've had here in Greece, I expected the, the question to be the other way around. Why not play the third one? Right, okay. But... but uh, the, the truth is in the middle. I mean, uh, obviously, I really want to be able to hit with the Dominate uh, as often as possible. Mm -hmm. Because of all the power cards that I can force the hit effects this way. Yeah. So, six were, were a bit too low for me. Okay. In this regard. But on the other hand, at some point I was uh, really strapped for uh, for space mm -hmm. because of trying to take uh, put in some deck for all those uh, different matchups. Mm -hmm. And uh, I realized that sometimes, okay, if you draw hands with like three isolates for, uh, and uh, things like that, where having nine cops of a card, you open yourself to the possibility. Yep. I don't really like that happening, so maybe we can go with... Uh, one less. Okay. Makes I sense. I don't think I would be tempted to go with seven or six. 
Okay, so you always want more than six, but nine was just like a little too much just because it can clunk you up a little bit, right? And you run a lot of stealth cards in, in general, right? So you've got like, what is this, like three, six, nine, and then the eight here. So you have 17 stealth cards. That's definitely a lot of them. So just the possibility to draw like an all stealth hand is definitely something that can happen. And that's obviously like, it's a little bit of a brick for Azuri, but at least they all block three. And in, in case of the blue ones, you kind of want to get some of them into the graveyard anyways. So at that point, probably you just kind of try to set up a little bit, block down, take an off turn, set up maybe an isolate an arsenal or something, uh, and then continue on your way. It's not the yeah. end of the day. I couldn't phrase it better myself. Mm -hmm. All right, then, like we already said, looking for a scrap as like a payoff to the blue stealth cards. Codex of Frailty, yeah. Guaranteed I mean... three off in the deck. This is like uh, our Blood Rush Bellow, our Art of War. This is like our power card, right? This is like the, the strongest card in the deck, in my opinion. And like every Assassin pivot turn where you like, you know, turn the game around and make it favorable for you. In a lot of cases, that's going to involve Codex of Frailty in some way or form. Well, uh, well, yeah, I mean, uh, all the both in terms of you have a block like with uh, three cards and then you can go Dagger Codex from Arsenal uh, Death Touch. Mm -hmm. Or if you have Tunic Dagger Codex from Arsenal uh, CNC or, mm -hmm. uh, or whatever, these, these are uh, always very important. Or even turns when you, you don't have an arsenal and you just block with three cards and there's your tempo back. Yep. Uh, with the, the ponder also being uh, very, very important here. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we, we should be mentioning the fact that the frailty token against a lot of decks is very important. Yeah. I mean, Kodachi, Kodachi, nothing, nothing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's is, it's uh, really good against Ninja and Lexi specifically, yeah. Uh, does a lot exactly. of work. So, yeah, a, please LSS don't ban this card, we need it. No, I, I don't think they're gonna ban it. Like, you you occasionally get people going like, ah, Codex of Frailty is so strong, ban Codex of Frailty, and personally, I think if this ba card was banned, like, Assassin would be not really playable, in my opinion. Like, the deck would just be too straightforward and fair. We need, like, one really unfair above rate card to actually do something and that's codex of frailty for us blood rush bellow for the brutes lexi has like i don't know nine of them so you know <laughs> but uh yeah that's that's how it is okay and then lastly in the main board we've got two blue shreds and this is another shred is one of those cards where I would say like the assassin community is a little bit split about it. Like there's some people that really like shred and there's a ton of people that really hate shred just because it can be kind of clunky if you draw it at the wrong time or if you put it in arsenal, if you draw it off of a ponder, it could be a card that you kind of don't really want in your arsenal. So why did you include shreds and why only two of them? Uh, what was well, the idea? Uh, first of all, I have to say that I lost a game uh, to a shred being my ponder card and mm -hmm. going to Arsenal, but that's also a bit of my mistake because mm -hmm. uh, I had an opportunity to throw it on a hurl, mm -hmm. which is in my sideboard, uh, but I didn't uh, being a bit greedy and saying, okay, I will throw it in the Live No Witness, which I will close my turn with. Right. But my opponent, uh, wisely as he didn't have an Arsenal at the time, said, okay, let's take four. And I couldn't, and I, I had it uh, stuck there. Right. For, uh, and and uh, this was one occasion where Shred did, was not good for me. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, in the final, I I had to hard cast a shakedown, mm -hmm. and but was able to trigger Shred and uh, give a grand shakedown its own hit. Right. And th this was a, a massive upside at, at that point. So uh, let me go you through a bit on my decision to include the uh, Shred. Mm -hmm. Before having Shred, here there will be more blue stealth cards mm -hmm. but as you were uh, saying earlier i didn't want to have all those turns of having an all stealth uh, hand mm -hmm. which is which is, which is pretty dead and I, I was looking for alternatives and thread the blue one is a blue card that blocks three mm -hmm. always worth consideration true 
And also, it's a card that can get you an on-sheet. Mm -hmm. I don't. I had to draw it on a ponder, mm -hmm. or in a three stealth cards. And but even in that, even when you have some hand with a three uh, stealth cards and this, maybe you can go with a I don't know as a date, and maybe if they block with a two, you can uh, make it hit and give the inertia. Mm -hmm. um, th this isn't something that happens all that much. Mainly, it's a card that blocks three. Sometimes gives you non hit. These are the, the main functionalities. Right. It just kind of rounds out your blue count. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah, and the thing is, I didn't want to play the blue infect, mm -hmm. both because of uh, what we said earlier about the stealth cards, and also because my ideas on the, the blue stealth attacks that I'm including are that either, okay, you have backstab because of the uh, nice combination with CNC, mm -hmm. And yep. the, the other two give, uh, if I don't have anything and my opponent doesn't uh, block them anyway, they have to think about blocking them because the tokens are a bit detrimental, whereas the blood root coming from a, an infect for one, it's just, okay, you take three instead of one, whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, makes sense. Whereas, like, the inertia messes with the arsenal, wither messes with, like, Alexi or uh, uh, Katsu trying to go wide, so... Makes sense, yeah. And then the, the two shred, also, like, the chance of actually drawing one of them off of the ponder is, like, not that high if you only run two of them, so that makes sense, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so that takes care of the main board, and interestingly, you run... You're looking for a scrap into everything, is that actually correct? So this yeah, is just... Yeah, yeah. Main board, every single matchup, you just run looking for a scrap. Okay. Second MVP, second MVP. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a bit of a struggle sometimes to get uh, a blue in the discard against yeah. Ice Lamp, for example. Mm -hmm. But uh, you are on the lookout trying to do it. Right. I mean, she does give you opportunities to discard cards sometimes, right? Like either you can block one of her big attacks if it's a bull lander right you can just throw it in front of that or sometimes they just give you like discard opportunities with like ether ice vein or something and you're just like yeah i'm not gonna pay for that i'm just gonna you know discard one of my blue stealths uh, maybe never, take the opportunity i don't think you're ever discarding a blue against yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I, on the ice vein maybe not uh, but other than that because almost everyone is playing the many many attacks mm -hmm. version with uh, not only the three for sevens, but also a uh, scar for a scar, mm -hmm. and uh, even CNC has been played. Yep, yeah, I've seen and, that. Yeah. And in this situation, sometimes you have to ah, but okay, block two cards. Now my uh, my scraps are live. Right, makes sense. Yeah. Okay, so let's go over the sideboard a little bit. So we have like the again some standard pieces here. Uh, sink below, fate for scene, just your standard zero for four defense reactions, great cards to include. Give and take in the sideboard is interesting because I think most decks that I've seen so far, including the deck that I run at the moment, basically have a give and take and looking for a scrap kind of switched, right? So that give and take is in the main board because it blocks three and you can just kind of run it into everything. And then looking for a scrap is the one that you sideboard in for matchups where you want to go a little more aggressive. So that's kind of an interesting choice to only bring give and take in for some matchups. Do you see it as more of like a specific anti-Bravo card in the sense that you can set up these loops with it in the late game? Or what is the intended use case for this in your deck? Well, uh, well I have to say that, uh, as you can see, I consider my deck a 46 main with mm -hmm. 14 cards coming up from the sideboard. And what happens is there are cards in the sideboard that will be main deck like 70% of the time or more. Right. So it, uh, some of the cards are a bit of a pseudo main deck. Okay. Uh, I would say give and take probably is one of them because mainly because of the fact that, that it blocks three. Mm -hmm. And generally, what I'm trying to do with this is try to have it in the in the second cycle where uh, life totals are lower and mm -hmm. and the choice to not block it will be more important for my opponent because if you hit them for three go again when, when they are thirty. Yeah, like they don't really care most times. Yeah. 
The truth is that it sees play in most of the, in most matchups, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Right now that we're talking, I am struggling to remember that, okay, I don't run it there. But in my mind, it's still a, a, a sideboard card. Fair. It, it, so I, I run it a, 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 quite a lot. Okay. So it's like a stealth main board, basically. <laughs> For yeah, the most a, part, a, but you sometimes a, take it out. Okay. A, a bit like Sing Below, to be honest. The only place where I'm not playing Sing Below is uh, Kano. Right. Yeah, it makes sense. Because, like... Mm-hmm. You know, they're not going to attack you, so it's kind of dead. That's true. Mm-hmm. Right, then we've got Humble. You already said this is like a sort of second MVP for the deck uh, in some situations. So where do you bring this in? Like, obviously, against decks where the on-hit is, is relevant. So I would expect it to see this against like a Leviah, obviously, just because it can be absolutely punishing to them if you can land Possibly. this at the right time. Um, I mean... Uh... It was uh, very important also I, in my top four match with Reinar because mm-hmm. I was able to land this. Uh, the turn before my opponent went uh, Blood Rush Berserk. Mm-hmm. And if you you can watch in the stream, he, he's trying to say Intimidate, I'm saying nope. Right. Because, uh, and this uh, giving me the ability to be able to block on his big turn uh, is, uh, is massive. Yeah, true, true. Like it's a it's a great car. Like the two block obviously hurts a little bit, but there's a lot of heroes where turning off their hero ability just is completely debilitating. Like if you can land this against the Dromai, they're not generating any ash, their dragons don't have go again, so their turn is gonna be extremely weak. This is a really great hit effect against a lot of heroes. But it can be hard to fit it into the deck with all of the other pieces that we have that we want to bring. So I've definitely, I've run Humble in the past. I don't have it in the list at the moment, but it's definitely a card that can always come back in if some hero is like threatening in the meta where this card is like a good answer to them. So I can definitely see running this. Also, this puts you at what? Three, six, 15. 15 poppers, right? Yep. So that is that's quite a a large amount of poppers for the draw my matchup, and I can assume that if you had run into any, this would have been a good help at like controlling their board state, controlling their damage output, just being able to have a lot of poppers and then still have some of those cards to actually attack with and pressure them. Definitely helpful. In my experience, uh, even 15 is uh, not really enough most of the time. Mm. But uh, yeah, uh, Humble is amazing against the Brutes. Humble is uh, very good against Dorinthia. Humble mm-hmm. is very good against Dromai. Yeah, true. Uh, hum- Humble is uh, very good, uh, good against Katsu. True, it is, yeah. It, it oh. kind of takes away their ability to sculpt their turn. Like they, they have to have the combo naturally or their turn is just going to be kind of mid and they're blocking or not blocking sometimes will give you this information and you mm. can, uh, then schedule your, uh, your blocks accordingly makes sense yeah all right then we got hurl okay just zero for three go again so this is just an extender in matchups where you need to go a little bit more aggressive i would say anything in particular with this card that stands out or it's just like yeah it's a hedge up well, uh, it is a it is a heads up for assassins. Mm. I don't think I actually ever did it, but f- uh, for example, if you see in my final uh, match, I pitched one early on, mm-hmm. and the thinking there was that okay, uh, right now it's just uh, three damage, but uh, either it will be blocked or it will pass. But at fourth, it's little impact. But yeah. I'm hoping that if the game goes into the second cycle. I might find myself on a spot that I might be throwing my spiders by it with Hurl instead of Flick Knives mm-hmm. and uh, start starting my, my chain like that and uh, have uh, an additional uh, threat. Yeah, makes sense. In, in this way. Like also, sometimes you can kill your opponent when they're at two with like Hurl, Flick Knives, right? Um, and they can't really do anything about it. So it's, it's an interesting late game threat card um, in that respect. But it doesn't come up very often yep. in my experience 99.9 percent is three go again uh, yeah that's just what it does right then we got two copies of oasis respite i'm assuming this goes in for like wizard rune blade do you also run this against other heroes like let's say azalea or bravo for example or is it really just for the the classes that force you to pitch 
on their turn anyways. Well, the reason the card is in the deck is the Slander matchup. Right. I mean, if it was just Kane, uh, Kane would probably not include in the deck at all. Mm -hmm. But uh, like you said, having it in the deck, I'm going to think about putting it in uh, against uh, Azalea or mm -hmm. uh, Bravo or even uh, Dorinthia for that matter. Okay, right. Because they can sometimes also dominate stuff or it can just be nice to have like an extra defense reaction that uh, they don't really see coming. Uh, and sense. obviously, if you manage to have it on the turn that you have uh, three counters on Tunic, yeah, that is it's great. It's not costing your card. Uh, in this situation, it's a, bit, uh, it's a bit amazing, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, for me, that almost never works out. Like, I have the worst draw luck with Oasis. It's always I draw it exactly the turn after I use my Tunic counter, and I'm like, okay, what am I supposed to do with this now? But if you can line it up with the Tunic, it's a pretty good card. That's true. Well, as you're saying, uh, you're really correct that it's not like uh, you really have an option and, or you will be in the mindset, let's save tuning for when I draw Oasis. Yeah, it doesn't really happen. But like. the 1% the of the time that it does happen, it's really nice. It's pretty good. All right, then we come to the spicy stuff. So th I think, again, these cards that we've talked about so far are like, Fairly standard sideboard cards for Uzuri. You see those in a lot of lists. All of these cards are very common to see. The rest that we're talking about now is a little bit more spicy, I would say. So let's start with the big spice here. The single copy of Pummel. I love seeing that. I've actually started running a single Pummel myself. I haven't tested it enough yet to decide whether it stays in the list. But it can blow out someone so hard if you can line it up on the right attack it's insane so what has been your experience with with running the pummel well uh, my experience has been uh, definitely positive mm -hmm. uh, in the tournament i was able to land it multiple times uh, mm -hmm. with multiple being more than once i don't remember if it was uh, two or three it, it was definitely not five or seven right okay yeah but still, when you land the pummel on a surgical, yeah, it's it's havoc. It is a a game swinger at this mm -hmm. point. If you land it on on a CNC, mm -hmm. likewise. Yeah. And the thing is, after that, when the uh, the list is closed and the, your opponent does not know how many you're running, mm -hmm. it's a psychological effect because uh, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe he's running more copies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If they've seen and, the one pummel, they're like, okay, could he have another? Yeah. yeah, and when you're playing in the top cut where your opponent has seen the list mm -hmm. and you haven't played it yet, yeah, <laughs> when, when you, when you uh, have to pitch for a, a pizza blue for a sense and you have three counters on Tunic yeah, yeah, and yeah. make the in Arsenal, it's like... Hmm. They're, they're kind of afraid, like, is it the pummel? Is it not the pummel? Yeah. And it's so hard to play around the pummel, right? Like... You can't really just block 10 on a CNC because you're afraid of the pummel. Like you yeah. you kind of have to eat it at that point. You just have to be like, okay, either I block 6 and I hope they don't have the pummel. Or if, I, if I'm very sure they have the pummel, at sometimes you just have to eat the CNC. You just have to go like, okay, uh, I take 10 here just because otherwise I have no turn. And that's that's a really, really strong thing to do. I, I don't think I would run more than one just because yeah, it's such a clunky card and it can really, really screw up your arsenal uh, if you put it there at the wrong time. But I think the single copy of Pummel for Uzuri is something that should be explored a little more. I think the card can really have a very, very big impact on a matchup where you can completely turn the match around based off of this one single card, basically. Well, uh, consider uh, hitting with uh, with this on a shakedown. Mm -hmm. but you had to hardcast for, uh, for some reason. Yeah, yeah. The, the upside is amazing. It's pretty strong, yeah. Like, And you can layer the effects, right? So you can go like, okay, I, I hit with shakedown first, so they don't have a chance to discard, and I can kind of choose what I want, and then they have to discard on top of it. It's pretty good. I would probably go the other way around. Actually, and, yeah. Uh, uh, ha have them discard the card first, because this gives me information true. on what color to choose on the shakedown. True, true. If they discard a red, there's a decent chance they have another red. Likewise, if they discard a blue, they probably have another one, you know, that kind of stuff. That's true. That makes sense, yeah. 
Okay, so Pummel. Next up, we've got the unmovable, and you already mentioned initially that you were mostly running this uh, as a anti-Bravo tech, right? Yes, also for the the idea that an Azalea might uh, mm -hmm. appear, because essentially you kind of face them uh, the same way. The, the main difference is uh, they stack uh, three, uh, two, two non-attacks on the big arrow. Yep. Uh, to make the, the similar effect with a crippling rush or, or, or uh, okay they don't have an arrow so they don't hit this card to cards yeah. but uh, you, you you get my point uh, the big arrow with the uh, the massive hit effects mm -hmm. so this uh, unmovable uh, helps also there and once again it's another uh, defense reaction that will be slotted in against Dorinthia mm -hmm. true true so you have like a six, eight, basically ten defensive cards that you can use against Dorinthia, right? Mm -hmm. uh, between the unmovable, fate foreseen, sink below, and the oasis. So you have a multitude of ways to kind of slow our, down their turn, stop them from gaining counters, and eventually just kind of overwhelming them and get them in the position where they, they can't take the damage anymore to actually have really threatening turns. Yeah, that makes mm -hmm. sense. Right, Codex of Inertia. I imagine this is like Icelander hate for the most part. Yes, this has been helpful against Reinar, the, okay. the one guy that went to top four, because this is uh, some uh, a deck that needs to have an arsenal, and they yeah. put an important card in the arsenal. So by sending it uh, to the bottom, you really saying, okay, maybe another day. Right. Okay. Because it's uh, the, the, what the guy ran specifically was like a combo deck, right? So you, you try to assemble these like Berserk Blood Rush turns. And then obviously if you give them an Inertia counter, that kind of messes with them. But how do you, did you use the card? Like were you waiting until you had an arsenal yourself to play it? So that the random card off the top doesn't mess with your turn? So you basically only play it for like the tokens? Or did you actually use it on an empty arsenal and get the card off the top as well. I think that in most games I used it for the card at the top. Mm -hmm. And the thing is that, okay, there are situations where you say, okay, Codex of Inertia, past turn. Mm -hmm. And this did happen. Right. Uh, however, even if it's three damage, yeah. it's kind of free. True. Because when you're playing it like this, you're trying to play uh, like a pseudo Codex of Frailty. And it's a card that comes out of nowhere uh, from, from the top of your deck, and you don't have cards to discard at this point. Mm -hmm. So it's, a, it's another three damage. I will live with this, or it's a blue with with a token. Yeah. Okay. Uh, meanwhile, I I am already discarding one card from my opponent's hand if if he doesn't have an arsenal, mm -hmm. and forcing them to maybe block another one. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Okay, there were, there were times where it, I just uh, put the defense reaction there, uh, playing it this way, and I, w I was exploring the opportunity to play it with a card alert in Arsenal. Yeah. But there was also a, 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 at least one game where I, I got a death touch of it. Okay. And this was a massive upside. That's pretty nice. Yeah, if you get a death touch and then you have the resources left over to pay for that, that's that's very strong. Yeah, true. Mm -hmm. But it's just yeah, I, I I'd have to. I haven't tried playing this card. I'd have to to figure out how to get the best use case out of it. But inertia against Icelander is so strong that I can definitely see this having an application. It's just a very clunky card to use in my opinion, and it's gonna be tricky to get the most benefit out of it. Obviously, sometimes you, you have knowledge over the top card, right? Because you played like a Fate Foreseen maybe or something. And then the Codex of Inertia gets a lot better. If you know what's on top, obviously, you can plan your turn around how to utilize it best. But you don't have that many effects that give you knowledge over the top of your deck. So uh. It's just Fate Foreseen. And, but yep. the thing is, I really agree with you. And I wasn't considering Codex of Inertia until like uh, the last week of testing. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, at this point, I have to give a shout out to my friend uh, Kostas Paltoglu, known as Enegon in the Discords, etc., mm -hmm. who first brought up that maybe we should try this against Icelander. Yeah. It got in the deck precisely because of Icelander, because we, it was a very uh, tough matchup. Right, yeah. For us. 
and it stayed there because uh, obviously I slander I was expecting and it was quite a popular choice. Yeah. And I it still found some players I mentioned against some other use, uh, cases as well, okay. like the Rhino ones. Nice, yeah. Uh, yeah, anytime you want to disrupt the Arsenal, being able to do that with no interaction on their side is obviously very strong. And it could be worth to run this despite like the downsides of the card. So definitely nice. And then we have uh, Yellow Death Touch, which is a card that I have seen in Usury Lists before, definitely. But for the most part, I think it kind of got cut just because it's, you know, not that impactful at the end of the day. But I would assume this is also mostly to have more options to give Icelander inertia or, yeah. This is actually, uh, these two copies are the last cards that got into the deck. Mm -hmm. The pre the cards that they, were, they replaced were uh, the Black Tech Whispers. Right. And uh, the Vampires of Determination. Ah, okay. Yeah. Because... Uh, the, after uh, what happened in the U.S. Nationals, <laughs> yeah, uh, we did, I did have a concern that someone might be running this, yeah, and or uh, maybe uh, more people because okay, g uh, both Garden and Runeblade have been uh, pretty popular uh, here, mm -hmm. and someone might say okay, let's try the best of both worlds because let's face it, when you're playing a deck that is mostly blocking, yeah, it's it provides increased consistency because you are only playing 50% of the game. True. And that this is 50% fewer opportunities to make a mistake. True. Yeah. I like this. So, I think this Fatigue Briar list is a, a, probably a pretty strong deck. And I'm, I have a, a not a loss against it. I, I, without Vambras, I straight up lose. Yeah. Yeah. Vambras is really like, I, I'm. I'm kind of glad that this is a deck that we don't have to experience for very long because I think playing against that is just kind of miserable without Vambrace and then running Vambrace just for that one single deck. You know, we're back in old him days, basically, if that happens. So um, I'm not terribly sorry to, to see the fact that that deck didn't get to live very long. So it's okay. So as I was saying in the last a week or a couple of weeks, mm -hmm. well, uh, that probably no one is running uh, this deck. I'm so okay, let's not have a, a dead card in my list mm -hmm. and let's see which is the matchup that I want some help with. Right. Icelander, okay, best us, you're in. Makes sense, yeah. Like, this is a it's the best card you run, you can run if you want to have access to more inertia. And yeah, Death Touch is a great card, so running more copies of it makes total sense to me. Okay, that's the list all done, taken care of. Um, so how about we load it up and we take it through a match. Uh, copy this. And then let's head over to Talishar. Do you have any preferences? What would you like to play against? Or should we just see what we end up with? Uh, let's see uh, what comes uh, up against us. Okay, sure. Okay, let's see what we get. It was a bit uh, frustrating uh, during testing where uh, I would uh, create a game and uh, minutes pass and no one joins. Yeah, happens but sometimes. It's part of the deal, really. Yep. Maybe people just don't like this mode because it's like too... Um, I don't know, like which, which mode do you typically uh, well, in testing? Just regular or like this one? Well, the thing is, I... While well, I want to be playing uh, like competitive, etc. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, let's lose. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I, I think uh, Arachne is uh, very favorable against Uzur, but yep. let's let's do our best anyway. Yep, 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 absolutely, yeah. Okay, they let us go first. That makes sense. Okay, just gonna ask them if recording is fine, and then meanwhile we go through the deck. Do we just bring everything against Arachne, just like uh, the whole thing? Yeah. Yes, probably like, right. Um, because they're going to be banishing left and right. Yeah, and I think we just kind of need to be prepared for that option. Just bring seventy cards, and defense reactions are good against them. Doesn't hurt, especially like the zero for fours. Okay, go for it. Okay, they let us go first. Submit. That looks fine. Let's go. 
Okay, so we didn't really get anything good there. They yeah. do just run 60. Do we attack here or do we just kind of pass? Because like these effects are not really very live at that state of the game. I think that, okay, we're definitely putting the Azure in the arsenal. The only yep. question is, do we hit them with a dagger uh, before doing so? Yeah, I would I would uh, dagger just to get rid of the Oasis, because that's really a card that I kind of no. don't want to see at the moment. Um, so I think we just go Oasis and pitch the CNC and then attack them with the Shakedown. Next turn, like Isolate Shakedown, yeah, yeah, yeah. or would you prefer Isolate CNC? If, given the fact that they don't have the providence, since it would be nice. Yeah. Okay, and let's, let's do that, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we pitch the aces, shake down, and then uh, we just pass after that. They just take one, perfect. And then we just go like this and arsenally isolate. Okay, nice. Okay, 39 to go. Yep. <laughs> Just need to do this 39 more times. Let's go, people. Uh, yeah, the unmovable here is obviously not great. And so he starts with the spider's bite as well. Do we block this? The thing is that it's difficult to say, really. I yeah. I would be inclined to let it slide. Probably, yeah. Uh, I think we just don't block this. Um, it's kind of unfortunate to have the unmovable here, just because that's kind of not great okay you strike for seven i can work with that um probably just give and take isolate and then arsenal the unmovable next turn yeah 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 this yep. is what i would do just take the three that's fine okay he has a razor okay fair enough Damage, damage, okay. It's damage. okay so there go oh, okay i see what this is yeah this is like the more aggressive build that Archon has been promoting, I think. So that makes sense. And now the Command and Conquer is also kind of like the bad choice here. So that's interesting, yeah. Okay. But that's originally why I kind of wanted to go for Shakedown, right? Just because if they just don't have an arsenal, the CNC here is just kind of two damage and that kind of does nothing except two damage. So we arsenal this, perfect, we've got the blues. Uh, and we do have an opportunity to get one of these into the graveyard as well. That's kind of nice. Mm -hmm. And we have Tunic to line up with uh, looking for a scrap. So that's also pretty good. The only thing we don't have is something to follow it up with. That's kind of annoying, but kind of tempted to just... Maybe just take it and uh, yeah. then the big attack with some movable. Mm -hmm. Sounds pretty good, yeah. That works. Ah, and he has even bigger than that. Yep. That's a new tech. Uh, I've been playing a version of this in Uzuri myself, and it's actually kind of good. Even bigger than that is surprisingly good in a deck with daggers. It's really fun. Mm -hmm. So they are playing that version of the deck. All right. Um, they layered two to the bottom, one on top, and he got Annihilate from it. Okay, right. Very nice. And then it's a leave no witnesses with go again, but he cannot actually play the annihilate here. Yeah. Because it costs one and he doesn't have anything floating. Okay. I think we still use the unmovable here. It's kind of overkill, but... But uh, if you don't lose it, uh, use it, you lose it, so... Yeah, so... Um... There could be the idea where you go uh, block with I the think... two Actually, block with the two blues, right? And then just go hurl into looking for a scrap of tunic and mm -hmm. just keep the unmovable around. I think that makes more sense here. Yep. Yep. Just block four. And then we have the two blues uh, set up for the next looking for a scrap. So that's already pretty good. And then we just go hurl. Nope. We're probably not going to block this. Damage always. Yep. And we do banish here just for the extra damage, I think. Just for five. The go again isn't really that. I mean, they don't know what we have in Arsenal, right? So the go again might actually be relevant. Okay, they give us some uh, 
some equipment blocks here. It does look like they're going to try to go for a, a for equipment activation next turn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a pretty aggressive uh, Arachne build, but the fact that we have the unmovable in Arsenal is really good here. Ah, the spider's bite. Um, yeah, I think we still don't block this. Mm -hmm. And if they have another even bigger than that, we kind of get punished for it, but, you know, it is what it is. Okay, Tunic. Uh, they attack with a Nerf Scalpel. I don't really care, because the Unmovable is going to cover 8. Yeah, now 7. Now seven, but even if they flick, it still covers six. So unless they have a CNC, it doesn't really matter. Okay, it's annihilate the armed. Sure. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna block that with the immovable. Uh, they left the top card, so that's probably an attack. Yep, they use the mask. Very nice. They probably don't want to use the boots here, but I am going to use the unmovable, so that works. So they wasted their mask. That's pretty good. Always. No silver for them. Very nice. All right. Uh, so now we just go isolate into humble, I would say, just mm -hmm. because it does a little bit more. But do we want to arsenal the nourishing? It, it kind of feels not that great in arsenal, to be honest. They still have the Providence, and maybe True. they'll be nice and throw a CNC at us. They do have the Providence, yeah. That's pretty good. I can work with that, yeah. Or you could go the other way and just hit them with the nourishing and uh, keep the humble, but it's uh, really defeats the purpose. Yeah, it kind of it, it doesn't really make much of a difference, to be honest, I think. Um, I mean, their ability is not that super relevant. So, <laughs> humble here doesn't really do a whole lot. But it does a little bit, so it's not the worst. They probably have some form of defense reaction here, like a sink, maybe. Yeah, okay, they got the sink. So they're just going for taking a little bit less damage off of this. Okay, and then we arsenal this. Okay, death touch, pretty nice. Leave no witnesses. Lots of options with this hand. Always love to see that. Uh, nerf scalpel, we don't care. We don't have a D-React, so hit me. Uh, it does uh, reduce the blocking capability of Shred, but we don't care. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. And plunder the poor. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of tempted to... Uh, yeah, I'm kind of tempted to do something here with that. Maybe block with the crown of providence just to cycle the nourishing i don't know what do you think uh, uh, certainly doesn't sound about the, like a bad idea i mean we don't really like nourishing in our arsenal mm -hmm. and uh, the, uh, the only question afterwards is do we uh, also block with a set for a full block or do we just allow it to, to i think us? I think we we uh, shred for the full block here just to get rid of. I don't want them to generate silver here. Generally, like uh, the more silver we can deny, the better. I think this is gonna go for us. So, um, also, the the other question is: Do we then use uh, the shred or the sedate? Mm -hmm. I think the the shred because sedate allows us to play the death touch. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, yeah, we just have more options that way, so. Sold. And maybe he has, like, a razor here. That's certainly possible. And if, if it happens, you know, it happens, that's okay, but he does not. So he wasted two cards, that's okay. And then I would say we go Spider Spite, pitch the Death Touch, and then we just go Sedate into Death Touch, right? So, uh, here's something that uh, I found uh, interesting in my testing. Mm -hmm. In the games where I don't use uh, Snapdragon, so I generally lose. So, I would uh, consider mm -hmm. uh, going for a uh, Spider's Bite into Living no Witnesses mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Snapdragon. Snapdragon uh, I, into Death Touch. I, mm -hmm. On the other hand, it is a bit early. Yeah. 
maybe we'll have uh, more opportunities. Mm-hmm. Uh, because the other uh, idea would be that, okay, uh, right now the way we're doing this is we keep the Leave No Witness in the Arsenal, so I think yep. this is the best. I also don't like, uh, I don't hate Leave No Witnesses in Arsenal, like, uh, that's that's pretty good. And it, if they... It's like, better than the nursing. If, if they go no blocks on the death touch, we can still think about using Snapdragons to give, uh, use Leave No Witnesses to have like an actual, you know, kind of threat. So let's see how they block this. I mean, if they just block six, obviously, right? Um, we can Arsenal the death touch and leave it at that. Uh, they're blocking two. That probably means they have a D react and then we have flick knives to get around that. So that's pretty decent. I don't hate that. Uh, let's see if they do. Yep, they got the sink. So I think maybe, we flick here. What do you think? Maybe, maybe we we'll let them have this victory because it's still early. Because yeah, it's still good closer. point. And and uh, death touch is not super punishing here. Yeah, that's fair. We just let them have that. That's okay. I can work with that. Okay, sure. Although a thing to consider here, maybe now Snapdragon is relevant. Mm. Yeah, could be. But it, it's still early, though. So it is kind of just... early. I think we'll have a better opportunity for it la next turn. And I don't hate yeah. having Leave No Witnesses in Arsenal. It's a pretty good Arsenal card. So I think we just Arsenal this. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Interesting. Um, yeah, sure. We can like block with the shakedown. Go hurl, hurl, leave no witnesses. Uh, okay, it's a naked death touch. That's kind of interesting. Um, yeah, we'll go with our plan, I think. Uh, it, it's, I don't think it's worth uh, losing uh, six, po uh, six points of damage mm -hmm. over uh, uh, the token they will give us. Yep. Okay. Yeah, if... I think we just block with the shakedown here, right? Yeah. And that works. Um, the, the other heretical idea would be okay, just uh, unmovable. Mm -hmm. uh, hit them with the living witnesses, uh, move on. I mean, that saves the most health, but it's also a really inefficient play, so I don't know. Yeah. Uh, nah, I think I want to push some damage here. Yeah. Um, so we just block with the shakedown. Yep. Okay, I think that's the best way to do it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, keeping the unmovable in Arsenal is uh, mm -hmm. just fine. Uh, yeah, blood rot. I was figuring they would give us the blood rot here, so... Nobody cares. <laughs> yep, it's just damage at that point. I mean, they are trying to race, right? Like, this is a very aggressive type of uh, Arachne list. With, like, the, even bigger than that, Razor Reflex, all of that stuff. Um, they're definitely trying to go for, like, an aggressive strategy here, so... Okay, another hurl, sure. There you go. They're taking that. And then leave no witnesses. But yeah, generally this is a matchup where uh, Arachne is favored, I would say. Um, just because the contracts are just so efficient at grinding down your resources. Hmm. I think that the way this game has gone so far, it's in our ballpark more or less. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, uh, they're not playing. Okay. Ooh. Blocking Ooh. six. A regicide. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. All right. That works. Just... I do not want to pay three. I mean, I would like to pay three. I just can't. So, okay. Three. Okay. That's pretty decent. Uh, okay. Tunic. And okay. Command and conquer. Okay, block with two blues. A little bit of a punish here, but not the worst. Um, we just send the E-Strike for seven and call it a day. Yeah. So we just block like this. That's fine. Or we could do E-Strike for five, draw a card, but that's kind of gambling. Oh, no, I no, think no. I prefer the seven oh. here. Seven all the way. Yep, yep. Okay. Bottom this. Buff power, just send it for seven. Just a solid two card seven. Can't hate it. I mean, uh, our uh, turn value right now, just now, was uh, 13. Mm -hmm. Slightly above curve. Yep. I'll take it any day. Pretty solid, yeah. 
and we now have definitely enough blues in the graveyard that we can, you know, enable all of the looking for scraps that we're going to see. So, pretty good. Mm. Okay, the running concealed blade as well. That's kind of interesting. Lot of interesting cards, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, they they are trying like the more aggressive style of uh, Arachne, where they just where they don't go straight up fatiguing you, right? So I can respect that. Okay. So I think we go for the fate block here, just because it's kind of the only option we have. Yeah, they left it on top. Okay, so it's probably I don't know. Yeah, I think we just still go with the Fate Foreseen, even if it's kind of like overblocking, but it's the only card that makes sense. And I think this turn I would be tempted to go for Leave No Witnesses, Snaps, Backstab, Shakedown, right? Exactly. Yep, I think that's the line we go for. So let's see what they left us on top there. Ah, the Nourishing. Uh, yeah, I'm bottoming that. <laughs> yep. Bye. <laughs> I don't really need that. Okay. Very nice. And then we just go with... Uh, one consideration is we could actually... Ah, no, then we don't We don't have a way to turn the shakedown on outside yeah, of Flick Knives. Like mm. But uh, it's still fine because uh, you can yeah. go uh, Leave No Witness, Spider's Bite, Shakedown. Mm -hmm. uh, do, we, do we send the Spider's Bite first or after the Leave No Witnesses? What do you think? I th the thing is uh, all the attacks block for three so if mm -hmm. we send it, uh, before the leave no witnesses they'll mm -hmm. just give two cards but if we send it uh, after mm -hmm. on the leave no witnesses they will be uh, I, I think it would be better to have it for the shakedown mm -hmm. uh, the debuff yeah, makes so sense. So I would, I would lead with the leave no witnesses we could also lead with a nerve scalpel just to in case they have like a de-react um, we they haven't only... seen any fades. They've only played two sings, so I don't know if they're on fate for scene. But just to make sure they don't have a one card block for the um, leave no witnesses. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this uh, this is actually a better idea. Mm -hmm. Let Let's do it this way. All right. So we go with this. Okay. They let it through. Nice. Then we send the uh, leave no witnesses. Okay, they just block three. Okay, interesting. So they're just trying to save some health, I guess. Or they do have a D-React in Arsenal and they need to block like this. Mm -hmm. if, if it's in Arsenal, it doesn't make sense, yeah. Okay, they do have the Fate in hand. Okay, nice, yeah. All right, perfect. That's actually pretty good. Okay, we, we got two cards in this sense, which yep. is nice. Pretty decent, yes. So we let that resolve. And then we use the tunic and we send the shakedown. I mean, they could just block six here, potentially. I could the see thing that is, happen. Even if they don't, I mean, mm -hmm. at this point, uh, do you flick and try to hit the blue or do you just uh, do the three diamonds and move I on? I think I just deal the three and move on. Like, if yeah, they have exactly. one card left. I think I'm fine. I don't need to flick here. I just deal three and call it a day. Because we yeah. still... And they have another sink. <laughs> okay, so actually, correct call to not uh, flick here. Because it wouldn't have done anything. Nice. Okay, so... But we did blow through, like, the majority of their defense reaction. So they've used all three sinks. They've used one fade. So they have another two, probably. Which means we have only two fate for scenes to deal with and we can keep our flick knives around for those so that's actually pretty decent okay let's see what do we do here okay this codex is a little unfortunate actually yeah, we'll just uh, use the we'll just pitch uh, it i guess are we pitching it with the oasis for the dagger mm -hmm. yep absolutely uh so we just go like spider spy pitch these two and then we go isolate surgical because the chance of them having another D-React here is pretty slim. And if they do, we can flick it. So yeah, that works. This is a prime uh, flick spot, I think. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, they block two, fair enough. And if they do have the D-React here, obviously it's a little bit annoying, but um, it's fine. It's another one out of the books. Yeah, yeah. Okay, no, they did not have that. Um, so I think we take, they are going to have the Tunic come up. And I think Annihilate does more against yeah. us than Rob, so we take that. And I don't really care about the Unmovable. Not a bit. Or we could actually take the Unmovable so they can't dagger, right? Um, and then their turn is just like Annihilate, and that's it. Okay. Uh, what do you and think? Al and also we, we get a Silver, but uh, yeah, let's not take a dagger. Let's just uh, yeah. send away the Unmovable. I think the Unmovable is actually kind of the best choice we have here because these two are like kind of identical um, and we have the unmovable in arsenal that we can use to just fully block it unless this happens and we don't draw a, uh, a blue which is fair but you know yeah so they're just sending the annihilate and yeah. the thing is at this point we we, we i would do the subpar play mm -hmm. just to get away from the arsenal and uh, put in the death sense place mm -hmm. This is what I would do at this point. I think it makes sense because the unmovable is kind of really clogging it up at this point. Mm -hmm. And then we get the death touch and it aligns with the tunic and we just pass one turn. It's not the end of the world, so. Okay, he's cut. Oh, perfect. That's actually lovely. So he just yeah. cut that and we just cover exactly eight. Um, and he can flick, of course, and then it's kind of, you know... Okay, I, he gets a contract. He plays his deck for for a yep. bit. It's okay. I can work with that. So this is obviously not the sequence of cards you want to see for this, but he kind of has to flick here. Yeah, yeah, he's flicking here. And then we we kind of got rid of the flick for like one card essentially. If she's, so, she will get one silver. Yeah, question. like he doesn't. Oh, ah, he oh. gets a codex of frailty. Okay, so he doesn't oh. even get the silver. That's okay. Like a codex gone, obviously. Um, yeah, you, not that you, great, but I can work with it. That's fine. Okay, so we just arsenal here, right? Yep, sure that works. So one one thing we can do here is we can block with three cards, play the codex of inertia just to, for the tokens, play the death touch, and get a free arsenal. So that's actually pretty good. Just great. Yep. Um, I am actually considering maybe give the death locking with the death touch here. Yeah, I think that's fine. Mm -hmm. Okay, nice. Uh, five go again. So generally, they, when they're uh, selling the go again at you, they have something better afterwards. Mm -hmm. So, I, in my opinion, I wouldn't block it. Yeah, and we can still dagger with the isolate in case we don't need it. So I think we just take five here. That's fine. And yeah, they gotta rob the rich. Okay, sure. Mm -hmm. They sunk the top card. Okay. Question is, do we block here? Do we try to cycle the isolate? Hey, I wouldn't try to cycle the isolate because our plan for the next time with dagger yeah. in so we just block four and they get the banish and it happens yeah yep i think that's fine yeah so we just sync that's fine they hit a command and conquer okay pretty good they get one silver i can work with that so we just go spider's bite isolate it's an interesting matchup actually mm -hmm. they take that Okay, sure. We play Codex of Inertia. We don't do the instant yet. Doesn't do anything, we just get the tokens. Uh, and then Tunic, Death Touch. And I assume if this hits, we're going for... Actually, it's kind of... Frailty shuts down Assassin pretty hard, right? So... Right now, I think it's just uh, Blood Rot. Blood Rot, probably, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it seems like they found another defense reaction. Okay, let them have Let's see. Ah, no, they actually didn't. Okay, they just blocked two. So I think we go for... They did keep a large hand, so we could go for Frailty because they also have an arsenal. And they're well, looking uh, to play it out because of the inertia, so... 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think uh, frailty actually could do more for us here than blood rot because blood rot is just two damage, so yeah. And we're at equal health, so I think I, I choose frailty here. Uh, and nice. another death touch. That's actually a great hit off the top there. Awesome ponder. That's pretty good. Very nice. Okay, they have the leave no witnesses. And now they don't have the dagger anymore, but they probably have something like the uh, uh, cut to the chase. Yeah, because we've, so we've only think... seen one of them, I think. So we've I think we block one. with one of the e strikes here. Yeah. And then we have the sink in case they go over. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that works. Let's go with that. That's fine. Um, I mean, this is kind of telegraphing uh, that we have the, you know, we have the sink, but I can work with that. The thing is, yep, if you don't cut, play sure. <laughs> And they have a razor on top. Okay, sure. Um, okay, I mean, that's fine, actually. Uh, honestly, that's kind of fine. I will sink and then sink the E-Strike. Yeah, that sounds fine. And then our arsenal's gone, and we can use the Codex of Frailty to do stuff. So that's pretty good. Um, I can work with that. Okay, not ideal, but actually pretty bad, to be honest. This is, like, not the card we wanted here. It's okay, it's okay. Huh, how do we do this? We okay. We can. Uh, I think it's one of the uh, situations where you just bite the bullet mm -hmm. and uh, play the leave no witnesses and uh, call it a day. I mean, yeah, I think that's kind of the only we way. We wanted something to pitch for a dagger, but we didn't have it. Yep, dagger would have been ideal here, but yeah, or a hurl, even you know, anything to kind of front load that. But yeah, I think we just have to play this. No way around it. And we grab the leave no witnesses. That's fine. Discard that. Let's see what they get. Yeah, they'll give their own uh, leave no witnesses. Probably, yeah. Or maybe but CNC or something. At any rate, we've gone through two mm. of their uh, or three of their razor reflexes and uh, yep. two of their cut the chase. Yep. They've bit some shreds. Razor reflex, some... razor reflex. Yeah, they only have one cut left. And probably like maybe yellow shreds or blue shreds. I don't know how reaction heavy they play. And he got a death touch. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they are looking to block here probably with two cards. Uh, makes sense. They got tunic coming up. So just death touch is decent. And he discarded, I think, the blue shred. Okay. So we send the leave no witnesses here. That's fine. Ah, okay, he's blocking with flick knives. Okay, sure. It means we don't have to worry about that. I don't hate to see that. That's okay. An isolate, perfect ponder hit. Nice, got the command and conquer to go with it. Spider's bite for zero. Okay, sure. <laughs> I'll take that. <laughs> and a death touch for five. Yeah, so I guess we block with the nourishing and the surgical. Play out, isolate, yeah. command and conquer, set up the sedate in arsenal. Uh, yeah, uh, sounds fine. Uh, yeah. We, we want to maintain an arsenal, so... Yeah, I think daggering here doesn't really do much, because it's an isolate. So, yeah, unless they have, like, the extra... No, they, they can't use it unless they, you know, front load it, so... Yeah, I think we want the arsenal more than we want the... Um, extra dagger hit here mm -hmm. so we just go for this all right sure now the dominant really helps because if they have the defense action in hand they cannot play it on top yep. of the and if it's an arsenal they can't play it now anymore because it's a cnc and it was a slate of scholars in arsenal okay that works the scholars have been slain <laughs> indeed uh, they're daggering again. Okay, sure, but we've got the sink below, so we don't really care, I think, in this situation. I think uh, what's coming is probably something like a CNC. Uh, how many CNCs have they played? I think two. Hang on, let me check. Um, so we've seen one here. Actually, just the one, yeah. Yep, maybe it's one CNC it, here, and then it's, one... It's very strange, but maybe we're giving the sink below here. Because they're kind of telegraphing a... They are kind of telegraphing a codex, actually. 
mm-hmm. with the over pitch here. So they probably have a Codex of Frailty, and we've only seen one of those actually, yeah, played on their part. So yeah, probably this is a Codex CNC turn. So it makes sense to send a sink here, yeah. <laughs> True. Mm-hmm. Okay, sure. I am convinced. Are we sinking anything? I think I think <sighs> not, right? Of a six block. Yeah, we're kind of good here. Yeah, this is fine. I don't think we need to sink anything. Would be nice to get a better payoff for the sedate, but if the turn is just give and take, leave no witnesses, I'm fine with that too. Yeah, it's a codex. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, I figured that. They're probably yeah, they're grabbing the CNC, sure. And so I think we just go with our give and take and yeah. then we have the leave no witnesses. That's yeah. fine. Sure. Not the worst. So the question here is, do we play the sedate and maybe no. make them think we have something and block six and then we arsenal the leave no witnesses or do we just play the leave no witnesses? If I wouldn't go with shenanigans at this point, leave no witnesses will just uh, take away two cards. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because I, I, the thing is, if they, if they call the bluff, yeah. we'll, we'll have to switch. It's either a bluff or they just block two cards, blah, blah. Yeah. But let's just uh, take their two cards and... Call it a day, okay. Makes sense, yeah. Just go with the leave no witnesses here. Their thing on D reacts now also. I think they have one left, right? One or two. Yeah. If they try to play this now and it's not an unmovable, we're in a dagger. I think they have one fate for scene left, or maybe two. They played all three sings, one fate. Yeah, they should have two fate for scenes left, I think, at this point. Yeah, this is. Huh. Oh, okay, so nice. we hit uh, eradicate and surgical, pretty decent. No silver, but we don't really care because, you know, we're not utilizing it anyway, so. I actually good. played the uh, silver for its ability in the final. Yeah, yeah, that can actually be relevant, yeah. Okay, so we've got the Spider's Bite, but we have the Fate in hand, so I don't think we really care. No. Nope. Yeah, and we're actually in our pitch stack now, because this is the one we pitched on turn one. Mm -hmm. um, they're looking for a scrap. So we are kind of running out of threats. That's sort of an issue here, but other than that, I think we're probably fine. I think what this is, they kept four cards... This is two even bigger than that. I think they have the last even bigger than that. <laughs> so yeah, I'm probably. actually kind of tempted to block this. Yeah, I think I'll block this with the Codex of Inertia. Okay. Sounds because fine. they probably have the even bigger than that here. And then if we block here, that kind of gets around them really using that. And now they kind of have to use the silver just to do something because they're running out of threats too and at this point we're actually the ones fatiguing them if you look at the, the yeah, we card had, uh, we have 10 more cards uh, to yep. begin with that helps yes okay so they do have another cnc here that's kind of unfortunate at this point, yeah we, we only care for the damage to be honest so i think we're just bl blocking three taking three Going mm -hmm. for looking for scrap and arsenal the fate for scene. Arsenal the fate for scene, yeah, sounds good. Yeah, the sedate and arsenal is like, okay, whatever. So, yeah, just block three here, that's fine. I can work with that. And I guess they did have the even bigger than that, but now they have set it up in arsenal, so that's kind of annoying. Mm -hmm. We still have to play around that, but I think overall this was probably the correct sequencing here. Because, like, CNC with go again is a nightmare. Um, so we go tunic. Looking for a scrap. They kind of have to block this. Yeah, at at this least point. with one card at this point in the game. So They're not blocking it. So they probably have the last... No, they don't. Uh, okay. okay. Uh, next turn we're definitely throwing one dagger. And then we're trying to cleanse yep. the game with the, the other one. Yep. Uh, so we Arsenal here. That's fine. We got the... Uh, yeah. Oasis, the turn after we use Tunic. <laughs> to be fair... If we had tracked our pitch stack, we would have known this was coming up. So, yeah, fair enough. Again, 
I still think they have the uh, even bigger than that, so I'm just giving the pommel on the spider's bite here. Yeah. Just to deny them the opportunity of playing that. Yep, and now they have the eradicate. Okay. So hang on, do they have another cut to the chase? They have I one. I think they have one. one left, right? So we have seen one here. Two, let's. Uh, and it's a higher. The up. other one was. Where's the other one? Uh, uh, to the right. There it is. Under ah, yeah, here end. we go. Yeah, okay. So they've got one left. They do have probably some shreds. Well, the thing is, we can go with uh, uh, the faith for sin. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, if if need uh, be, we pitch, we pitch the to the uh, to the oasis. Yeah, we pitch yeah. the shakedown. Arsenal the isolate. Yeah. I think that's still fine. Yeah. Okay, they use the black text here. Sure. Then we use the fate. Uh, yep. Isolate on top is. Yeah, actually can... not that good i would bottom this here because we already have the isolate that we want to set up an arsenal so on the other hand it's dominate right so do we leave this the thing is uh, we're setting up the, the isolate of the arsenal probably yeah so i don't so... think we really need this right yeah i think we just bottom this here and it's also yellow so yeah, yeah. so it would give them oh. some silver yeah Okay. okay, so they do have the shred here. What else are they doing? That's the question. But still uh, with the OS. The thing is, we can probably also bite the bullet. Mm -hmm. uh, and just say, okay, isolate, shake down victory. Probably, yeah. I don't know, like, I... I hmm. they, do want to, they do want to go again, right? So they do have some kind of follow-up for that. Okay, so let's uh, hit the OS and nip it in the bottom. then. So Aces, bottom the shakedown, just see how it goes. And yeah. then we just play for we just play for time, yeah. We just play for another threat. And now we're asking, okay, do you have another... Yeah. Uh... I, don't, I don't hate it, yeah. Pitch the shakedown. And then maybe they have the cut here, maybe they don't. I think they don't. If they do, it's a little unfortunate, but, you know... Okay, Tunic. Ah, they have their last uh, Spreading Plague, okay. okay we'll I mean, take... that's okay, we've blocked with one card, so we get like one Blood Rot, that's okay. not the worst, I can work with that. Okay, so I guess they just wanted the threat of us blocking with more cards, basically. I think that was the idea here. Okay, sure, we just Arsenal. We, we do we... take the six, add a three, nope, that's fine. Arsenal this. It's okay. Okay, we've got a death touch. We've got a nourishing that we can send just for six. That's all right. Do they still haven't played the last even bigger than that? It could be that they're only on two. Do we block the spider's bite here? The thing is, we can block the spider's bite and then block for six and still go yep. uh, dumb with death touch and victory. Mm -hmm. True. Yeah, let's go for that. I can work with that. And now we just look, we just see what they do. Okay, it's just a plunder. Sure. I mean, I do block three here. The question is, do I care about the banish? Yeah, they don't have silver, so no. Not really, right? And we're also up in cards. We could give tunic here, but I think it's kind of unnecessary. Not necessary. Yeah, so I so... think I just block with the sedate. And no, it's just or a the nourishing. Block with the nourishing, we use a... ah. Well, a block with sedate and just go for pure damage. And yeah, go... I think damage is better, and then set up the death touch in arsenal. Yeah, I think that makes more sense. So we just block the sedate here. Let them have it. If they have a cut, it's fine. We still live. Uh, is even bigger than that does not work with they do okay. another spreading plague right we did see them pitch those that's true mm -hmm. and they actually banished the nourishing emptiness so they didn't even get silver off of that that's not the worst um yeah we just go isolate here and then if they have a d-react here it's kind of unfortunate but i think they're out of d-reacts i didn't really see them yeah. pitch any so 
they have pitched like a movable blue. Some oh yeah, they game. they did pitch a blue and movable. Yeah, that's true. But you also need to have uh, another blue to play. It. Yeah. Uh, of course, at f- f- the last fifteen cards, you have a lot of blues. Yes, yes. It's possible that they have that here. Yeah. Okay, no block. Uh, just, uh, no, no, just throw a dagger. Um, if... Sure, yeah. Which one? If, uh... I mean, nerf scalpel, I guess, right? Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh, okay. He has the fate now. Interesting. So he does get full value for that. Uh-huh. Double okay. fate. What? Okay, so we just pitch for the blood right now. Mm-hmm. Okay, makes sense, yeah. Wait, didn't he play like two fate for scenes earlier? No, he oh, he only the... played the one. Okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, sure. I mean, that's fine, I guess. And now the nerf scalpel really does nothing, so we don't care. Yep. It's still one damage, so we put them at three, no. so it's not the worst. And then obviously we don't do that. We pitch. All right, Codex of Frailty, nice. Can front load that with something. Uh, dagger, Codex, you know, do some stuff. Mm-hmm. Over pitch, get a CNC back, something like that. We've got Tunic coming up, so we don't even need to over pitch. I like this kind of more aggressive uh, Arachne, though. It's not really something yeah. that you expect to see. It's kind of cool. Did I just put cards in the pitch zone? I paid for Bloodroot. I didn't know that you could pay for Bloodroot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it doesn't happen very often that people do it, to be honest. So, Okay, sure. So they dagger. Yeah, I kind of think we have to take this. Yeah, this one, yeah. This one, I think. Yeah, we kind of have to take that, unfortunately. Let's see what are the last threats. I don't has. think he has a lot of threats left, to be honest. So He does probably have another codex. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, the last even bigger than that. Okay, sure, but I mean, at this at this point, we were playing around that so much, and he never had it. <laughs> uh, he reveals the Codex of Frailty, so he didn't actually have any attacks on top. Okay, and we know that he has a Codex of Frailty now. All right, sure. Okay, so our turn is. I guess we have to discard to the Codex here, right? I don't see oh, really yeah. a way around it. But yeah. I think we can just maybe keep the tunic by mm-hmm. going uh, pits uh, oasis plus backstab. Yep. Discarding the isolate and playing the yep. CNC. That works, yeah. And then keep the tunic around for whatever else we need it for, yeah. There's always next turn. Mm-hmm. Unfortunate side effect of Codex of Frailty. Sometimes you just have to do it. Actually, I'm kind of tempted to bring back. Uh, not C and C, but oh, he's giving a codex. Okay, I'm kind of tempted to bring back the what's it called? Give and take here. Ah, oh. because he has to block, and then we just get another codex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have three. He has to block, and this is out of the uh, direct. Yeah. I mean, he could block it with a shred, I guess, if he still has a shred left. And he does have the blue... Uh, no, his deck is just uh, blue stuff and... Uh, he does have level. the blue unmovable. That's still left in the deck, but other than that... Yeah. He doesn't really have anything. So, I don't know, like... I mean, we're definitely playing the Codex here, so that's that's a given, but... Mm-hmm. I don't know if CNC is the correct call here, to be honest. Or if we try uh, to, like, fake him out with the give and take here. Let's let's go with a tricky play. I like the idea of the given deck. I didn't think of that, so let's go with that. Yep. And I think we have actually one of them left in the deck still. There's one yeah. here. And there's one here. So there's one left in the deck still. We can set up a pretty nasty loop with those. So I think, yeah, we go for the give and take here. Yep. Just because it's kind of nasty. He has to respect it. Because it's lethal, so he can't just go no blocks. He could give us Tunic, I guess, or he does have the blue. Ah, yeah, he has the unmovable. Okay, I mean, 
Uh, fair enough. Um, it's okay. He could have blocked six on the CNC with the other card here and the Slay the Scholar. So I think the end result doesn't matter that much. Okay. It's two cards gone and uh, yeah, not that big of a change, honestly. Uh, we get an Isolate, nice. Not the worst, Humble, perfect. And there's the other give and take and we've got Tunic ready for that. Uh, sure, yeah, undo that, that's fine. Okay, he has a CNC, all right. That's actually kind of annoying. But it's five, so we can block five. And yeah. go a uh, humble, uh, dominated mm -hmm. humble. Dominated humble, yeah, that works, sure. Kind of sad to give up the give and take here because it's it's kind of cool to get them into that loop state, but I think we have to play it like this. Yeah. And we know they're all out of D-React, so isolate humble should be lethal, I think. It's stuck for Victor. Yep. I mean, he does have another one. Holy no, cow! Okay. okay. He, All right. Cool. He did. Two he did down. have. He did have two of them. Okay. Sure. I didn't see the second one pitch. To be honest, I wasn't tracking that. I was kind of. It's okay. So he's on two. We still hit him here. And now we can start daggering, and then. Flick knives for the win, I think. Mm -hmm. We get the fate set up in Arsenal. Ooh, isolate, love that. Nice. Uh, so he daggers. I'm Would tempted you... actually to go isolate, shred, swap into E strike for five, because that should also be lethal. Yes, hey, we have lethal in so many ways. Yeah, yeah. We have a lot of ways to do lethal here, so I think I'm just gonna take this because yeah, I have the we have the fate in Arsenal if it's necessary, and probably okay. He goes tunic into what is that surgical? Okay, nice, yeah, perfect. Fate just cover that up with the fate for scene. That's nice, very good. We can honestly bottom that. We have enough yeah. isolates. Okay, sure. Um, so we go dagger, isolate, e strike, I think. And then we can like, shred the isolate. Like first shred, then isolate, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So we just. I mean, if he doesn't block this, we can just shred and then flick, and he's dead. Yeah. That works too. So he kind of has to respect the dagger here. Yep. He did respect it, okay. Yep, yep, that's fair. So we go isolate. Actually, I'm. Uh, yeah, yeah, we couldn't have shredded because it was a block three, right? So, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Okay, so we isolate. He has to block that as well. Yep, probably giving tunic here too. Yep. And then we shred. The concealed blade. And we switch in. And we kill him with an E-strike. It was a good game overall. It's something I wouldn't... Dream yeah. of fate. No, I don't, I don't think you expect to face this anywhere, but that was a really interesting match. Like, I like that. He was on three cards as well, right? And we were at... We were at eight, so not, not like that many more. Just that if we had decided to bring a clean 60, actually, we would have lost to Fatigue, so... Maybe, yeah. But on the other hand, we would have seen fewer clunky hands. Yeah, maybe. It's it's always a consideration to make. Like, do you go above sixty or do you keep it to sixty? It's it's kind of. I think with Arachne, it's uh, no go. I think you have yeah. to go. Above. You have to go above sixty. All right, interesting. So we had an assassin mirror, and that was actually a really interesting and and pretty nice game. I like that. Okay, cool. I think with that we can kind of wrap it up here. We did our our match. We put the deck through the paces. It worked beautifully. I like this. It's a good list. I'm kind of sad we didn't get to to see the pummel in action, but I think you it's just yeah. You, I think you have to you have to accept that you're not gonna see pummel do something in like every match, right? There's definitely gonna be situations where you're not using it, and if you can use it and it blows out somebody and it wins you the game, that's already worth you know using it for. 
And it also didn't really clunk us up this game. Like the first hand, we just pitched it. It was fine. Second one, we used it to block the dagger. It was fine. Like it was never clunky to the point where it lost us the game or anything running the card, right? So mm-hmm. exactly. I think I'm fine with this, yeah. All right. So do you have anything else to add? Some like last words of wisdom before we close this out? Well, I'm really excited to see the meta shift with the next set. Mm-hmm. And right now it's really like a dark forest. We really don't know what's going to come up on top. I, I'm really expecting that mechanologists will be able to do something. Yeah, definitely. After yeah. getting cards for the first time in 2023. Yep. And other than that, I would like to take this opportunity for a shout out to my playtest group, the Trio Pushes. And uh, Isidoros, uh, Yorgos, Kostas, and Vangelis and Panos. All Greek guys, naturally. Nice. And because it was with their help that uh, I did uh, lots of the changes and gave me perspective in things like, for example, stealth attack into Zuri effect for give and take mm-hmm. to go for, uh, for something else. Mm-hmm. That, that hadn't crossed my mind before. I was just uh, looking at uh, give and take with narrow mindedness of, okay, late game. Uh, gives you back some epodics or something, or passes uh, three damage and uh, gives the opponent a hard time. But the very nice thing with Uzuri is that sometimes you can use cards in in ways that you hadn't thought before. Yep. And come up with very nice plays. Like, last example, in the final, at some point, I had played the Fate for Sin and seen another on top of my deck, mm-hmm. and I have a dead hand. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm just going to throw the three guard, you know, or looking for scrap into dagger. And then, okay, I'm stuck with a blue wither in hand. Do I try to do one damage and maybe take one card out of my opponent's hand? Or do I pitch it for silver, mm-hmm. put the fate for sin in arsenal, and uh, be prepared for what's coming and turn the blue into a ponder? Mm-hmm. And uh, I did the second thing, and it it ended up working at this point. Yeah. But the thing is, it really encourages you to think a bit out of the box. Yeah, it's like, just, definitely, yeah. Another thing you can do with the Slump Dragon is, okay, sedate. Ah, uh, my, uh, the opponent takes the bluff, blocks with Luca. Okay, Slump Dragon, blah, blah. And uh, uh, have a, a very nice turn. Suddenly, he, your opponent has two fewer cards to block. So the the possibilities are there, and you you can uh, really squeeze the stone and find amazing plays. It's a that's what I love about the deck. It's so flexible, and you can do so many creative things with it. And it's that's really in sort of a very unique position, just because the nature of how her ability works right makes it so that every set will probably have something that we can put in a deck even if it's just like some kind of generic card that we can swap in maybe with an on hit or something everything every set gives us tools to work with because her the kit that she uses is not very narrow right like she's not like some heroes where it's like yeah if it doesn't say assassin on it i kind of don't want it right sort of the same way mechanologist worked for the longest part where it was like okay you really only want the mech cards and then maybe some generics for like the turtle build but it's not very flexible kit wise and uzuri is kind of like the opposite of that right where you can use all sorts of different cards and you can do all sorts of different builds right we've seen like three or four different types of azuri builds perform well at like competitive events now this is just like the latest iteration of that and I'm very excited to see where this hero is, is going in the future because, like I said, every set, I think, brings with it the, the opportunity to get more creative with deck building. It's really great. All right. All right. So, again, thank you very much for coming here on the channel and uh, sharing your deck and sharing your success at Greek Nationals with us. And if you guys out there have any questions about this, just leave them down in the comments below. We'll try to answer them. The deck list will, of course, be linked in the description of the video. So if you want to try this deck out for yourself, you can do so, obviously. Hit it up on Talishar. And with that being said, like I said, thank you for being here and see you guys in the next one.
Thank you for having me. Farewell. You're welcome.